Yeah, okay, here we go. I've always been bothered by physicists' preoccupation with conservation of information, especially in regard to particles falling into a black hole. Firstly, it sounds more like a philosophical position than one derived from through mathematics or scientific method. Correct me. Secondly, Mr. Heisenberg taught us that one can never know all information about a particle. Thus, can't we consider that information to never have existed in the first place and thus can't be destroyed? I, so here's what, here's what I think they're saying. Unlike a black hole, take the sun. Right. Mm. You can reconstruct what made the sun. That's how we know. Oh, the sun looks like three dozen supernovae constituted. You can look at what it's made of today and reconstruct where it must have come from. You can't do that with a black hole. Right. That's the. I so think so you're in the that. we lost information camp in the black hole. Or, Clearly. Or, or information. There's too much made of this information. idea. Both. Exactly. OK. Both. This, this is where he's coming from. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Give me another one. This is Christopher from St. Louis. When were we looking into the cosmos for possible Dyson spheres? What criteria are we using to tell the difference between a Dyson sphere and something else? Let me get that Dyson sphere out of your mind right now. All right. All right. Because I did a little calculation. Mm -hmm. Right. Basically, you're not going to have enough matter to build a Dyson sphere. If you took all of Jupiter and you try to make a Dyson sphere around the sun using all of it, the idea is that that matter, that's like taking a human eyeball and trying to make a sphere around a basketball using that material. So you're trying to harness the energy of a star you're using to absorb, this artificial... You're trying to absorb it in matter, right? And then convert it to useful energy, like, right? right? And so you do not have enough matter in the solar system to create something to create larger. something that you could put around because the sun it's not large enough or because it can't hold because it's not large it's not it's like the stars are so much bigger than their planet right if you had that much material it means you're visiting other star systems. Why would you be right. wasting you it? This is not even an interesting what? exercise. You don't, need, you don't even need it at that <laughs> it's point. Like, what are you trying? <laughs> right. Right. You know, you're scooping more... up thousand, the planets of a thousand solar systems to get the energy right. from one star. Right. Right. What the exactly. hell are you doing? Hey, guys, we already yeah, got the energy. No Why sense. are we trying to create the yeah. energy? You know what? The sun uh, already has a Dyson sphere. You know what it's called? So when you think of the sun you think or a star, you think of it as two parts, the core mm -hmm. and the envelope. Right. The envelope is a damn Dyson sphere. It's already there. It's, <laughs> it's just glowing. naturally natural. It's fifty percent of the matter, yeah. right? Fifty percent of the matter is in the core. Fifty percent is in the envelope, and it's absorbing the energy that's coming out and radiating into a useful form that we can build our solar arrays and <laughs> <laughs> capture. All right. Let me add to that. Last year, there was a research paper on a observing project to look for Dyson spheres. Wow. Now you know how they're going to do this. They're looking for very, very red star systems. Oh, so they're like, they're not getting all the energy. Well, well they're, well, they're, just, they're just saying that if you absorb all the energy from a star at this greater radius, yeah, yeah. then it would then radiate. Yeah, in the infrared. In the infrared. Yeah, and so yeah. they're suggesting that they're aliens. So they have a data set of a they're handful. They're cheating of, because of, there's all these stars that are enshrouded in dust that do the exact same exactly thing. That's exactly the, the, the rebuttal to that. Yeah. That there's stars, <laughs> when you're in dust, it absorbs the energy and it re radiates and it radiates. Right. It, makes, it makes the star look very red. Yeah. So that was the ordinary explanation yeah. for those very red stars in that, um, in that experiment. Thank you.